So far, everything that we have in our project, you might have noticed, is actually a component. And as I've said before, one of React's greatest strengths is that it allows us to create reusable components. So at the very top level in index.js, our class app extends component, which is of course from the React package. In the same way, the header is a component, the footer is a component, and app content is a component. But it's also possible to create functional components in React, and those are plain JavaScript functions. So let's do that. What I'm going to do to start with is go back to index.js, and I'm going to comment out the footer here, which means, of course, that uh, down here I have to comment that out because it doesn't exist, and that works fine. So if we go back and look at our web browser, it should be the same except that we have no footer. And we don't. There it is. So, what we're going to do now is create a functional component that takes the place of app footer. So let's do that. So in my source folder, I'll create a new file, and just to make it clear what it is, I'll call it app footer functional component .js. And inside of that, I'm going to, first of all, create a function. And I'm going to give a few blank lines because we have to do a few more things before this will work. I'll say export default function, and I'll call it app footer functional component. And I'm going to take the argument props, even though we won't use them, but I'll talk about that in a moment. And inside of that, I'll do exactly what I did in my app footer. So let's go to appfooter.js and find the return state and copy that. Actually get the constant too, and copy that and go back to my new app footer functional component and just paste that right in there. And you notice right away, we have a few things missing. To start with, I'm returning JSX, which means I have to, if I want this to do anything, I have to import React from React, like that. And because I'm using Fragment, I also want to import Fragment. So let's put that in there, Fragment. Now I have no errors, okay? So I've created this functional component. How do I use it? Well, one thing to note right away, because this is a functional component, without the use of something like React hooks, which we'll look at in the last section of this course, we have no access to state, we have no access to the this keyword. It's really not nearly as intelligent as a true React component. But there are lots of situations where you just want a basic dumb component, and this is exactly how you do it. You declare a function, you import React and whatever else you need from the React package, and return what you need to return. So let's format this. Now let's go back to our index.js right here and scroll to the top and let's import the new functional component we just created. Import and I'll call it app footer functional component from dot slash app footer functional component right there. And now that it's imported, I can come down here in my return statement where I'm rendering JSX and just say app footer functional component, give it its self-closing tag, and this will be almost the same as what we had before. So let's go back to our web browser and reload this, and there it is. Now what's missing, of course, is the CSS, and that seems a little unusual, but it's not because we need to go back to our functional component right here and just import its CSS. So we'll import, and we can use the same CSS file, dot slash app footer dot CSS. Even though it has a different name, it will still work. So let's go back here and reload that, and there it is. And it is styled exactly as it was before. But now, of course, this is a dumb component, which for a footer is fine. It doesn't need to have state in our case. It doesn't need to have any of the things that you would get from a standard React component. So there's no reason not to use a functional component in that case. Now, I mentioned that I'm passing props here. And of course, this is something that you will probably use. You want to be able to pass properties to your functional components in a lot of cases. So if I go back to my index.js and add a property here, my property equals hello world, like that, then I have access to this in my functional component. So I can come here and I can't say this dot props because there is no this keyword. So I just say props dot and paste in my property. 
And now when I save this, because I called it props here as the argument to my functional component, and I referred to it props as props here, and this matches the property that was passed to this in index.js, when I go back to my web browser and reload this, there it is. Hello world. And that's all there is. So functional components, use them all the time. When we get to the React router part of this course, we'll be using functional components as stubs to start with. So the key things to remember, if you're going to be using JSX, and you almost certainly are, you must import React. If you're going to use fragments or anything else that's part of the React package, you need to import that as well. And always pass this props argument, particularly if you're going to be using properties, otherwise you'll have an error. I could take out this property and take out that uh, argument to the function declaration and it would work fine, but you should get in the habit of passing props, even if you don't use them, because you might at some point in the future. Now I'm going to revert the source code to the state that it was at the start of this lecture, but this version with the uh, functional components is available as part of the course resources for this lesson.